Hello, normally I feature audio and video technology, but today we're looking at this little solar powered rechargeable external light with a built in motion sensor. And what's really nice about this one is that because a solar panel uh, has a long cable on it, it can be mounted remotely from the light. So the light can be put in a fairly dingy place, but the uh, solar panel can be put to pick up uh, daylight from a sunnier part of the, uh, the building. Right, let's unbox this and have a look at it. Right, this costs £17.99 uh, and comes with a three-year guarantee. And see what we get inside. So there's the solar panel with its long cable and DC jack on the end. Handy thing about that, if you needed to extend it, that should be a reasonably easy uh, cable to extend. Here's the light unit. It has a bracket there so we can alter the angle it points at but only in that direction you can't alter the angle that way terribly easily but you can alter the angle that the sensor points in and there are three controls here time sensitivity and lux plus and minus and all of those I'll set them all to middling so they don't feel that great they feel a bit croaky so how sensitive to movement uh, what it considers to be dark enough that it doesn't need to light up and how long the light remains on and there's an on off button here so you can switch it off uh, if you don't want to have the operation at all uh, and I think that one lights up red so we'll uh, play with that one later some instructions and some mountings now for mounting the solar panel this could be put anywhere that you can get this roughly facing south. If we undo these, slightly slacken these off, we can alter the angle that that sits at. The instructions tell us that it runs on 7.4 volts. It's got 1.8 amp hour battery, but it's not replaceable. Well, of course, it would be replaceable if you know how to. Uh, monocrystalline solar cell. Monocrystalline, really? Very good. Same as the type we have in our house. 3.5 watt. The adjustment's anywhere between two seconds and five minutes. Um, I would suggest probably about a minute or so is about right, depending on your circumstances. And it can detect up to 12 meters. It's splash proof. So I think we need to mount it so that as far as possible, any rainwater uh, would not tend to go into there. So we would not want to mount it the wrong way around or even sideways if you can avoid it. It's best to try to keep these controls downhill. Okay let's go outside and install this in its desired location. I may have to drill holes into the house which uh, is never much fun. So I'll install this light very carefully. Uh, the solar panel points in the same direction as the solar panels we have on the uh, roof of the house and though it said that the uh, unit is fully charged and ready to use I found that it wasn't. So I left it in brilliant sunshine for all, the whole day and in the evening expected it to work or at least the red light to come on to tell me that it was in the off position, standby position. But no, despite being out there all day, it didn't. And indeed, after two days of good sunshine, it still didn't work. So clearly, we had a defective unit. Now bearing in mind that the unit is now fitted to the house, uh, I wanted to solve this problem as simply as I could. So initially I thought, well, I'll go to Lidl and I'll buy another one and then make sure this works, fit it to the house and get a refund on the defective unit. So I bought this, but I thought, well, it's supposed to be fully charged. I'll test it. So I got back into the car, opened it, tried it, nothing. So I then spoke to a customer representative in Lidl and I went and tried several others. I think I tried two more black ones and a white one because I got them black and white um, colour schemes and they were all dead. Now you could say well they just all have flat batteries but uh, I don't think that's the problem. I think maybe what's happened is the batteries become over flattened and now will not accept any charge. So looking at this, this is a new one, let's get it onto the workbench and see what we can find out. So this is new apart from the fact that I have um, briefly tried to test it and get it to work. Uh, so this one has also been sat in sunlight. I left this in a window for many hours. 
what I think we'll do is just see if we can meter the output from the solar panel just with the studio lighting and see if we can detect uh, that the solar panel is uh, at least trying to work. I'm assuming it's center positive and we're reading a definite voltage there, I don't know if you can see that, we're reading 9.8 volts. Uh, put it into intense light from this, it's LED lighting so it's not ideal anyway, but we're getting like 12, 13 volts from the solar panel. So didn't think it would be a solar panel problem, so our problem is in here. Now the battery, there must be some sort of battery, is presumably in this section. Do I void the warranty on one of these units in the interest of uh, letting you guys see what the problem is? We don't know how this is assembled. If I could undo screws, that would be great. But uh, this is probably designed to not come apart. What are these blobs here? Is that something to do with the way it's uh, sealed up? Maybe there are screws under here. Yes, there are. So if I don't lose these, there's always still a possibility that I'll be able to uh, return the defective unit to Lidl. Well, let's see how this goes. So we'll take those bungs out. But there's every possibility, of course, I will obviously void the warranty here. Right, we can undo these screws. Let's use a decent screwdriver. And almost the only thing in there, actually, is the uh, battery. Does that have an internal overcharge protection? I'm trying to work out where the charging circuit is. So you've got this coming in. So for white terminal going from the control unit, I guess we're going to call it, to the LED there. So that's not relevant to our... The terminal here with the stripe on it, which is presumably positive, goes to the reddish brown wire out to the control unit. Ah, so the charger must be in there. An output from the control unit going to both the LED and the battery, and the return from the battery going straight to the uh, what I believe to be negative terminal on that and also the control unit. Right, can we measure the battery voltage? So we have this pinky red terminal from the battery, positive, and this black connector that goes to nearly all the black connectors. So those two should give us the battery voltage, and I'll bet it's zero. Are these twist-on connectors? No, they're kind of crimp on connectors. Um, whether I can get a meter through the bottom of that to reach the um, metal work. I think I can actually. Let's give that a shot. So let's measure the voltage if there is any. Okay, I've taken it out of auto range. So we're looking for voltage here between the output terminals from the battery. Well, there's only two terminals on the battery. Well, I'm measuring absolutely zero. Well, I'm definitely touching the metal there. Absolutely zero volts on that battery. So I think the battery got so over flattened that it couldn't take any charge. Let's undo this screw and have a look at the battery um, ratings and see if we can understand a bit more about the kind of battery they've used. Right, I've disproven one of my theories. I thought it had been hanging around for a long time. Date 2023. Okay, it's February 2023, but it's not that old. Lithium ion battery, 1800 milliamp hour, 7.4 volts. And yet, it's reading zero volts. Could I safely charge that to get it back into a, a working condition? It's got 18650 cells in there. There may be an overcharge piece of electronics in there, but without ripping this covering off, I can't tell. Do you think I should try to apply a very low current to that and see if I can charge it gently? What would Big Clive do?
probably try and charge it. So let's give it a whirl, shall we? So the first thing I need to try to do is hook up some connections to that battery. Well, I guess I could use my multimeter probes. They are sharp. These were made by Keithley and supplied with um, professional source meters, but they weren't needed, so all these terminals became spare. Okay, I'm going to hook it up to my power supply and see if I can very, very gently start charging it. So what I'm going to try, I'm going to risk, it's a 7.4 volt cell. I'm on the positive terminal there. Let's get the correct negative terminal. That's a negative terminal. So I've got a power supply. I'm going to try applying a little voltage and see if we can get some charge current. So here's the meter I'm looking at for current. It's supposed to be a 7.4 volt battery. I would expect some current draw by now. There we go, got a little bit current. Do you see that? I'm taking a little bit of current at 6 volts and I went into current limit. There's very little current, I'm going very, very gently. 100 milliamps. And then it falls off. Oh, and then current went up and it went into current limit here. It's trying to take a lot more current. It suddenly started taking like 200 milliamps. I believe that's a safe current just to get this battery started. So we'll leave that for a while and see what happens. Okay, uh, it's dropped off to zero current now. I'll try increasing it. The big hazard being, of course, that you must never over discharge cells like this. And obviously the protection circuit in here has failed in some way in allowing it to discharge this deeply. Shouldn't have happened. Okay, if I uh, disconnect my supply for a moment, does it hold voltage at all? Yes, it does. Okay, so it is taking charge. But the battery will almost certainly have suffered some damage as a result of this. I think I'm going to go up to a little bit more current now. 200 milliamps. Okay, we'll leave it like that for a while. See if the voltage comes up. It looks like it's working. And at this very low charge current, it shouldn't explode or anything. After charging up the battery uh, directly from a power supply for some time, I then switched over to uh, trying to charge it from its own solar panel, which I put under fairly intense LED lighting. So that was generating plenty of voltage. So overnight I left it partly on charge and partly not. The voltage has just fallen away slowly. So we can safely say that it is not working. Let's uh, see if we can get the light to come on at all with the charge it's got in the battery. Light here, that should come on red. Even momentarily, even in the bright light conditions, it should start up. Nothing. So I think the electronics are fried in there. We could possibly take this apart that looks like another screw hole there and then there's clips at the front maybe what we're going to see a PCB in there we're not going to get any further are we right I've just been up a ladder this is the unit which has been on the house for a week and hasn't been charging I'm just going to for no particular reason take the back off this one and see if I can charge this battery up and whether by some chance this one might work. Okay, so of course exactly the same. We'll take the two terminals from the battery, which are these two. Monitor the voltage on those and see if we can put some charge in. As the other one, the battery is of course completely flat. Let's connect our power supply up. Initially, I've got the current limit set to zero, just want to hook it up. Okay, I'm increasing the voltage, but there's no current draw yet. There we go. We're taking a little current. Right, we'll let that one charge for a while, 
and see if by some miracle this one works any better than the other. OK, we're up to about 7.4 volts, having been charging at up to around 200 milliamps, so a lot of the time it was less than that. Now I'll connect 12, 13 volts, something like that, to the uh, input to the uh, cable that goes to the solar cell and see if I can charge that way. So I've set that to about 12.5, 12.6 volts from the power supply sent a positive on the connector that normally goes from the solar so that's like a bright summer's day we're getting no current flow at all just checking that we have that 12 volts there yes we have the 12 volts going to the charging cable but no current draw at all which says to me it's not charging so the circuit is just not working so this voltage here will drop over time. All right, let's uh, have a look at the circuit. I'm going to just reassemble this and then see if we can look at the charging circuit in here. If this comes off in the same way as the, uh, the ones at the back of the light itself to reveal the same kind of screw. Yes, seems to be the case. It should be possible to pop these clips off, I think. And there is our PCB, but of course we don't really learn anything from that. Can we take the PCB out? Right, these controls here, the rods that connect through to the potentiometers are quite long, a little bit hard. I'm not quite sure how that's supposed to be assembled. I imagine these were fed in later. And there we go. There's nothing much to see on that side of the PCB, just the red light that lights up the button, and then the three controls. But let's take a closer look at this. I'll take a photograph with a microscope for you. So we have ground here, which comes around to this point. So I'll use that as my reference, I think. Just a little bit easier to get to. Seven volts there. And it goes to this 3.3 .3 volt regulator, I think, which gives us 3.3 .3 volts there. And it takes a path through some low value resistors to here 3.3 volts down to here 3.3 volts across to here 3.3 volts on this IC and I think that's about as far as I can go I did find a certain amount of contamination around this point here which I cleaned off a little bit but sure that's not the cause of the problem so we're getting 3.3 .3 volts on this IC but beyond that I don't know why nothing's working so uh, I'm just gonna have to reassemble it and call it a day I think here's another one of these units I bought this one about a year ago and it works fine as you can see And so the unit sat, ready to go back to Lidl, one in its box and one on top. And then I walked past them one day in the hallway and something strange happened. It lit up. The thing was, the red light wasn't on. I think I'd have seen that. But it lit up anyway, and it's not supposed to without the red light being on. But OK, let's just ignore that. It lit up. And now it works properly. So I left both of them with the solar panels in strong daylight and let them hopefully charge and refitted one back to the house. And that was about three weeks ago. 
and they're still working. Now, the amount of charge I'd put into the battery from the power supply wasn't enough that they'd still be working now. So they have been fully working and taking charge. I'm not going to strip it down to watch the voltage. I know it must be working at this point because one of them has been triggered, oh, dozens of times and is still working, still lit up so that the battery must be charging from solar as it's intended. So that's an extremely strange thing. We can only assume that because I got the battery voltage back up at some point, uh, a microprocessor in there did a reset and started working. You know, it's all well and good me saying the reason these things are working is because they've been charging from the solar panel. I haven't actually proven that, have I? It's, it could be, of course, that there's enough charge got into the battery from the power supply. I don't think so, really, but to absolutely prove it, I need to take one of these apart again and confirm that the battery voltage rises when I put light on this, or at least when I apply, say, 12, 12 13 volts to this connector. OK, let's do that again. OK, these are the two terminals straight from the battery. I think you can see that. So we'll measure the voltage on those two. OK, I have some 7.98 volts on there. Let's uh, put this in front of my LED light and wind up the brightness. And now you can see we're up to 8 volts. Uh, admittedly, it must be pretty much at the top of the charge level for the battery, but you can see that the solar is providing a small amount of charge to the battery. So the whole system is proven working. So what do you think? Do you think it was a, a processor reset or do you think something else was going on that caused them to start working? Uh, the point is now that even in bright light you should be able to switch this on and off. Okay, So it wasn't anything to do with lighting conditions that caused it to not work for me when it was indoors and one of them had been outside on the house. The questions remain are the internal batteries damaged by overcharge, uh, over discharge, or what we actually were seeing potentially was the protection circuit not allowing voltage out onto the terminals if the protection circuit is built into the battery. I think it is normal for that to be the case. So if you were to buy one of these, well, one, would you? Two, I would recommend that if you do see these in little that you try to test them in the shop before you take one away and if you finish up with one of these that doesn't work you maybe have the option of charging up the battery carefully it may be one or two hundred milliamps for a few hours then perhaps it'll do a reset and it'll start working right i normally cover audio and video technology on this channel i hope you've enjoyed this uh, brief distraction into these uh, strange lights uh, i'll do plenty more audio and video things but I've got a very special non-audio and video thing coming up shortly really excited about it something no one's done before as far as I'm aware not in the UK anyway so I'll see you shortly bye for now <laughs>